In running an adventure, I, I like to keep pace of the progress that the party is making. If we've got four hours to play D&D and we've kind of moved very quickly in a good way, quickly in a good way, and now we're back at the end and the next part of the adventure is a big fight with like the frost giant lords. This is going to be a pivotal point in the adventure. You know, the party is literally going to uh, decision making tree go left or right. It's going to be epic. If we've got 30 minutes left, if we've got 40 minutes left of gaming, maybe I don't want to introduce that right now. And, and players might not know it's coming. So they're at the inn, and uh, the next part of the adventure is the giants, the frost lords attack the inn, and it's this uh, amazing end to the adventure or to the next piece of the campaign. There are times where this is a good place to pause for next week's adventure. But that said, we want to get the most out of the D&D time. We want to pack it in. So what I like to do is... Um, I was going to say in my pocket, it's kind of not really in my pocket, it's in my briefcase or my gaming bag, I have about 10 or so side quests, side adventures that um, can really fit in and scale anywhere. They can fit in any campaign, they can be tacked on to adventure, they're literally stuff like random encounters. You're walking by the side of the road and this happens, or you're at the inn, that happens. And the nice part about them is they can fill in that extra time and they're they're just generic enough that the party will think the players will think maybe it's part of the adventure or part of the campaign if the group needs a little more experience i mean you've been there if you're a player right massive gaming session i mean we used to play uh saturdays from like 10 or so in the morning to like 10 11 o'clock at night i mean literally massive you could do a whole level in a day and there have been times i'm sure you've been there where you're like wait I'm only 200 experience points from next level. And I'm not saying give me that 200 experience points, but we got to do something to get that 200 experience points. I need to level up. So what do we have for a side quest? Uh, there's also times playing D&D where I've done it and it's been um, engageful. This idea of maybe there's only an hour to play D&D. And even with an hour to play D&D, I could just pick a monster and you could fight it. Sure, but I like to have a little bit of a quest. I like there to be a battle. I like there to be a little story. I like there to be some unlocks, some chance for role play. So I encourage you as a DM to build that toolkit, to look and see 10 or so, five or so, three or so little side quests. Let's let's jump into one right now. I was going to make this um, kind of a multi-part vlog series, and I'll, I'll push out the other three or four that that you can improve upon and, and think about. So this is, um, I try to have them by level too, but certainly they can scale up and down. This is one, if the party's about level five, six, or seven, they've, they've got some good hit points, they've got some abilities, um, but they're not over the top super powerful where they could just blast through this because they're going to have to make some decisions. And it plays upon. There's always, I don't mean this in a bad way. If you're listening to this vlog at some point, you know who I'm talking about. And I love you, brother. I love you. But you play the type of character you play. You know, I, I get that as a DM. There's always a greedy rogue in the party who they know it's a trap. They, they know they can't figure it out. They're like, somehow Fritz is, is baiting me in with this. But uh, the gold piece equivalent and the gold piece value is so much I, I can't turn it down. I have to go for it. So I always never underestimate the power of greed and magic items. In D&D. And I say that in full fairness because when I play, even playing my monk Tozen, who, who has taken um, vows of poverty and living a very monastic way of life, he doesn't need much gear. There's a couple of magic items like beads of force and things like that where I'm like, you know, hmm, that'd be kind of nice to have. So here's, here's the setup. The party is walking through. You're walking through a field. It's a beautiful summer day. Or beautiful fall day. Very, very clear sky. And you're on your way to the next part of the adventure. You're on your way to, to go to the next city or the inn, whatever it's going to be. And you start to hear a noise. It sounds like a scream way off and a rush of wind. And the scream's getting louder and louder and louder. And all of a sudden in front of you, there's this, this sickening pulp, this 
mass of metal, mangled armor just, just drops from the sky, smashes in front of you, and it's just like an explosion of guts and, and a mess of twisted metal, mangled metal. You see that it's a knight dressed in black armor. And uh, as you recover from this scene, you see this dragon fly overhead low. Black dragon flies overhead low and lands in a forest, a little forest about maybe five, six, seven hundred feet away. And you can see it land in the forest and it just is sitting there. Okay, right away, the rogue is like, search everything. Um, in, in searching, you, you find that although a lot of the armor is damaged, it must have some magical properties to it in that it quickly reforms itself. It quickly kind of, I don't want to say heals itself. But it looks to resize. That's the intro to the adventure. That's the intro to this little scenario. Um, if the party goes and explores the dragon, if they go to the forest, they, you'll see a black dragon there, um, probably mid-adult age. And it has um, a harness. It has a saddle. It has some sort of riding-type equipment. And next to the dragon is a glowing two-handed sword. Glowing two-handed sword with frost-like runes dripping frost down the blade. And it has this, this massive gem, this, this kind of blue crystal ball in the pommel. And it's stuck into the ground. Obviously, the knight had it, and it fell out of the knight's hands and stuck into the ground. And it's about 20 feet in front of the dragon. So right away, players are thinking, how do I get that sword? How do we do this? Uh, the dragon's not going to attack. The dragon's not going to attack. Uh, the dragon is capable of talking, but it's not going to make any motion. Uh, it will defend itself if attacked, but it's not going to leave. It's waiting for the commands of its master. Um, when I've run this in the past, uh, this is where things get kind of interesting. They distract the dragon. They try and get the sword. Uh, they try to talk to the dragon. Um, the, I won't say the correct answer, but what has happened also is players will realize it's magical armor. Obviously this black fallen black knight was riding the dragon and this is a chance. I mean, who doesn't want a dragon and a magic sword and whatever else, maybe there's saddlebags full of gold. Um, let's put on the magic armor and let's pick up the sword and get on the dragon. So this, this black knight, this evil knight had subdued the dragon and as, as part of that process the dragon takes things very very literal so literal that um whoever's wearing this armor the dragon will be like that's the black knight and it will follow commands even though it knows better it is tasked with defending the knight and defending the sword so if the party does try to steal the sword without wearing the armor or in front of the dragon the dragon will move to defend the sword but eventually um they get a hold of the dragon or you get on it, the dragon immediately takes off. Now, this is where things get interesting. Uh, the dragon was battling a high elf lord who's riding um, a hippogriff. They were going back and forth, way above there, settling some sort of duel, settling some sort of battle. The knight got knocked off. As the knight got no knocked off, his ring of feather falling fell off his finger, and he got pulped on the ground. So, dressed up as the knight, if a player dresses up as the knight, grabs the sword, gets on the dragon, the dragon's like, okay, we're back in combat. Dragon flies up. The elf lord on the hippogriff is looking for the dragon, sees it, is now going to attack the player. Um, if the players wait and the hippogriff lands and the elf lord gets off, the elf lord's going to be pissed because the players are trying to loot what's rightfully his. So now they got to deal with that. Maybe it's combat. Maybe it's not combat. Maybe you pay tribute to the elf. Who knows? But this is an example of just a quick little side quest that um, you can put in for some experience points. You can put in for some lulls. Or as I use them, if you have about you know 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and the game has ended, where you're not ready to start that next piece, roll it over and have your five, six, seven, ten 10 side quests ready to go.